In the world of cinematography, there is a magical word that is widely used in every area and not often pondered on its meaning. This word is contrast. We can encounter this word in every aspect of production, from pre-production to color grading. So what should we understand from this? The simplest definition of contrast is difference. It is the difference between two comparable quantities. Visually, contrast is the difference in brightness or color that makes an object distinguishable. In the visual perception of the real world, contrast is determined by difference in color and brightness between an object and other objects within the same field of view. It is also not a new concept, it has been around for centuries. Contrast has been used in paintings for a very long time to create meaning and also to add depth and dynamics to an image. Some great painters like Caravaggio and Rembrandt were one of the first to use high contrast in their paintings, which gave their paintings a completely different look than what was the standard at that time. The technique that they were used was called chiaroscuro, which is a term used in art to describe the interplay of light and shadow. This was then used a lot in the German Expressionist cinema. You've probably seen at least one film by Alfred Hitchcock, Tim Burton, Ridley Scott, David Fincher, to name a few. What they all have in common is they have been inspired by the German Expressionist movement. Alright, textbook knowledge is enough for now. Let's move on to the fun part. Today I'm going to show you how to create a powerful and vibrant high contrast look in DaVinci Resolve. But remember, color grading alone won't be enough to achieve this look. If your goal is to create a digital, like sharp and eye-catching images, you should use sharper lenses during your shoot. Also, the lighting of the scene is very important. I recommend paying attention to these details. I have this cool motorcycle image. I thought it would be ideal for this look. Even though there isn't much difference in the lighting of the image, we can achieve a nice result thanks to the details of this motorcycle. Let's get started quickly. Since I will be working with DaVinci White Gamut color space, I selected the timeline color space as DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. Also, my output color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Let's start by creating the node pipeline. I'm creating five nodes. Let's move these three nodes down here. Let's add two more nodes and place them here. To start with a clean image, I dedicate the first node to noise reduction. In the second node, I will use color space transform. Let's name it DaVinci White Gamut. The final node in the pipeline will be Rec. 709. The third node is for balance and exposure. In the next one, I will make adjustments with the curves. Then let's name this node contrast. The sixth node will be saturation. I will add another node here. We will make a simple look adjustment. In fact, let's add a parallel node to this one. If there was a human subject in our image, I would use this node for the skin tone. So let's name it skin. I'm adding one more node at the end. In this node, I will sharpen the image. Finally, let's add another node for the vignette. Okay, our node tree is ready. Let's start with the first node. Actually, my image is not very grainy, so I will leave this node empty for now. Select the second node. Here we will use color space transform. Find it in the effects library and apply it to the node. Let's quickly transform to white gamut. This image was shot with Sony. So my input color space is Sony S Gamma 3 Cine and input gamma is S Log 3. Output color space is DaVinci White Gamut and output gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. Now let's move to the Rec. 709 node. Similarly, apply CST to this one as well. Here, input color space is DaVinci White Gamut. Input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate, output color space is Rec. 709, and output gamma is Gamma 2.4. All right, that's a really good start. There are some areas in the image that might be oversaturated, so select Saturation Compression in the Gamut Mapping method. Yes, let's continue by balancing our image. Select the Balance node. Since my image has warm tones, I'm cooling it down with the temperature slider. Then I reduce the gamma in the primary wheels. Let's also lower the lift a bit and raise the gain slightly. This is before and this is after. Even this has quite an impact. This is enough for now as I will make my main contrast adjustments in the other nodes. Let's continue with the curves. Activate the editable splines option from the top right corner. Click on the point that controls the black and shadows at the bottom and lift it up just a little bit. So we want to open the image as much as possible, but it's very important not to crash the blacks. This will help us preserve the details in the blacks. Then drag the second point downwards like this. 
Extending this point affects a larger area. You can first pull it down a lot and then leave it in the middle. Now we will do the same for the highlights. Drag the top point down a bit and extend the other point to the left. Find the middle point according to your own image. Yes, this is before and this is after. I think it turned out really great. Maybe I can increase the highlights a bit further. The closer you pull these two points towards each other, the higher the contrast level will be. But be careful not to overdo it. A soft S-curve will be suffice. This is before and this is after. Wonderful. We have brought the image to this level using only two nodes. Let's continue with the contrast node. Here I want to show you a small trick. I'm going to use the contrast slider in the HDR wheels because there's a difference between primary contrast and HDR contrast. Let me add another node to show the difference. I'm just going to increase the contrast in the HDR panel. Let's turn off this node. Now let's look at the primary contrast. I'm increasing the primary contrast in this node as well. Now both are off. This is HDR contrast and this is primary contrast. I don't know if you can see the difference from YouTube, but the difference is that HDR contrast is only affects the black and white parts of the image, while primary contrast affects the entire image, including the color contrast level. Normally, I could prefer primary, but I think HDR contrast is more suitable for this look. You can use the pivot next to it to get the exact level you want. Yes, we can delete this node. I only added just to show the difference. Let's move on to the saturation node. Again, I'm going to use the global saturation in the HDR wheels. You can increase it a lot and then pull it back a bit. This is before and this is after. I think this level looks sufficient enough. Okay. Also select saturation versus luminance in the curves panel. Here drag the highlight points downwards. This way we increase the saturation level by boosting the color intensity in the highlights. This is before and this is after. We can see the difference more clearly in the front part of the motorcycle. Okay, now let's create a simple look. Go to the primary wheels. I'm pulling the offset towards the blue and green area. Then I'm pulling the gamma in the opposite direction. I'm looking at my blacks in my image to determine where to leave it. Okay, let's see. This is before and this is after. As you can see, there was a high level of orange cast throughout the image, so we cleared it. However, I still feel a bit of green tint in the blacks. For this, I will move to the log wheels and slightly reduce the green and blue levels. This is before and this is after. Yes, I think it looks much better now. But I think we started to lose some details in the blacks, so we can adjust the curve a bit. I'm pulling the button point a bit higher. Let's also raise the gain a bit in the balance node. Okay. At this point, if there was a person in the image, I would make adjustments for the skin tone. So I won't do much in this node. I'm selecting the color slice tool and I'm going to slightly reduce the density and saturation in the skin parameter. We can continue with the sharpen node. Since we want a more digital, sharp and powerful image, it would be useful to increase the sharpness as well. We can do this in several ways. You can use the blur menu or the texture pop effect, but I think the easiest way is the sharpen edges effect. Search for it in the effects library and apply it to the node. Activate the display edge option. This way you can see which areas are affected by this. Make your adjustments in the menu. You can now disable the display edge option, then increase the sharpening amount. Let's zoom in to see the effect. This is before and this is after. It's quite subtle and I think it looks much better this way. If you use this effect too much, you can quickly ruin your images. Finally, click on the vignette node, go to the windows menu and create a circular window. Then adjust its size and position, raise the feather as much as possible, then invert the mask. Finally, slightly lower the gamma levels. This is before and this is after. We've created a very soft vignette and preserved a lot of detail in the edges. Okay, I think we've achieved a very clean result. If needed, you can also do a noise reduction in the first node. Now let's go over what we did from start to finish. First, we converted from white gamut to Rec709 using color space transform. Then we balanced the image in the balance node. We created an S-curve for our initial contrast level using the curves. In the next node, we increased the contrast slider in the HDR panel. After that, we increased the saturation level. Although there wasn't a special look in the look nodes, we cleared the warm tones and highlighted the blacks more. We brought our details in the image by adding sharpening. 
And then we added a very soft vignette and I think we achieved a very impressive result. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. I hope I provided useful information for you. I recommend trying it out with your own footage. Also, if you have any questions, don't forget to mention them in the comments. If you are interested in color grading or editing in DaVinci Resolve, you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.